Basically, I think that I felt at that time that something was going to go on. I was keeping tabs on the the evolution of the um, of the conflict, the political and the the maneuverings before the actual invasion. And I thought to myself, this might go pear shaped. So, knowing where Jib is, is situated and the connections with the navy, there could be at one point that the base and the airfield would be used should it kick off militarily wise and that is basically one of the main ideas why I, I, I started the diary. It started with a few words or rather a few notes because I, I personally didn't think it was going to go that far. There was a lot of, um, of things going around which sort of uh, uh, got my attention and that's how I started really. Tell us about the key focus of the diary and also some notable moments in, in the diary. Yep, yeah, well, what I've tried to do with the diary, obviously there's 74 days worth of diary there, so I extracted most of the important issues that affected Gibraltar and, the, and in obviously the, the Uganda um, conversion was the, the, the most highest and largest of the, of the lot. There was also exercise spring train which brought together a lot of warships here, which eventually went down to the Falklands. The use of the airfield, the Hercules transports coming in and out, and uh, the use of the, the base and the airfield, uh, basically, at the end of the day, it's, it was the, the impact that Gibraltar had uh, during that time. You know. Tell us about the source of your information, because we're talking about 1982, so there was no 24-hour news. Right, yeah. what, what sources did you use? My prime sources were ra uh, radio. The radio was the, the best outlet I could find in those days. Uh, principally, uh, BBC World Service, which I spent hours listening to, in fact, into the late night, because uh, they, they were producing the most important news and factual news, with a lot of interviews, a lot of comments, uh, characters and all that and that brought it together it, it was more uh, factual and uh, precise and sometimes in, uh, it was more direct TV and, um, and newspapers I used mostly for the visual effects for pictures and all that to, but as the frontier was closed and uh, newspapers used to arrive late here and sometimes TV programs were, were late so uh, it, in, in honesty, for, for accuracy, the radio was the best source. And have you ever considered publishing your diary? E, now that you've said it, yes, yes. There is something brewing. Yes, I, I'm working at, uh, at it with a few people and hopefully if things go all right and if I'm satisfied with the content, which needs a bit of, of work here and there, yeah, it, it's possible, uh, more, more yes than no, that I, I'll, I'll get it uh, printed, yeah. You're very well known in the community for your passion for the Navy. Can you just tell us where does that all come from? Oh, I've got to blame my great, great, great grandfather for that on my dad's side. He was a captain of a ship in the 1800s. He was Spanish and he used to ply his trade from Barcelona to Gibraltar and back. Um, he dabbled in things that he wasn't supposed to do and one day while Steve and Gibraltar were preparing to go back to uh, Barcelona, some person approached him and said, uh, Senor Sanchez, don't go back to Barcelona, they're waiting for you and they're going to arrest you. So he stayed in Jib, he established himself, he brought his family, and here I am. <laughs>